One of the trends today is the emergence of 108 megapixel cameras on cheap and affordable phones. For the past few years, you had to spend a ton for a 108 megapixel device. But today, you can get a 108 megapixel phone for less than $300. In this case, we're comparing the recently launched sub-$300 Redmi Note 11S, which may be the cheapest 108 megapixel phone right now, and the $500 Xiaomi 11T that launched last September. From their prices alone, it's almost obvious which is the better phone. But the reason why we have this kind of comparison today is just to see how much of a difference we're looking at when comparing two 108 megapixel phones at different price points. So to all the followers, welcome back and thanks for stopping by once again. And if you're new here, we make tech videos of all kinds, so feel free to drop a sub to get notified of new content. Now optics-wise, both devices are using the 108 megapixel ISOCELL HM2 from Samsung, with varying settings when it comes to elements, aperture, and other technical details that would bore you. It's also no surprise that the 11T has the superior camera module thanks to the better camera specification and better camera software optimization from its more capable chipset. Nevertheless, we are comparing the same 108 megapixel sensors. To start things off, let's take a look at the high dynamic range shot in the middle of a day in auto mode with AI setting disabled. Right off the bat, the 11T already gives a more colorful rendition of the photo. It's as if you don't need to edit the photo before posting it on social media. The good thing about the flatter look of the 11S is that it leaves room for editing like adding filter without ruining the colors too much. As we zoom in, you'll notice that the 11T is looking more like a painting with its smoothening effect, but the 11S is looking over sharpened but still with a natural look to it. For the first photo, it'll probably come down to personal preference. Some of you might like the natural output of the 11S, albeit over-sharpened, but I could also see others opting for the more colorful 11T as bright and colored photos are usually what attracts the eyes. But personally, for me, I don't like the saturated colors of the 11T, so I'm sticking with 11S on this one. Switching to the 108 megapixel mode, we now have a more detailed rendition of the scene. While the 11T looks a little less cartoony due to the better sharpness, the over-sharpening effect of the 11S is almost gone to the point where it's closer to a mirrorless camera than the 11T. I definitely prefer the shot of the 11S to the 11T. Moving indoors using HDR in regular mode, it's hard to see the difference between the two. At a glance, they look identical, but if you're looking for the difference, you have to look at the whites to see that the 11T has brighter highlights than the 11S. But despite the 11S showing a slightly brighter photo in the scene, the 11T captured the more accurate color as seen from the green color of the box. But sharpness-wise, I'm impressed with the 11S locking into a better focus than the 11T. Although the overall result of the two photos is similar, I have to go with the 11T on this shot. But that's just my personal take. Switching to 108 megapixel mode, we're starting to see a trend here. The 11T tends to lean towards purple tint as seen from the plastic bottle and white surfaces, while the 11S tends to lean towards green tint. Both seem to have that noticeable bokeh effect in the background, but the 11T looks a tad sharper than the 11S. Don't get me wrong though, I also like the shot of the 11S due to it not looking over sharpened in this comparison. But I feel like this is going to be a toss up since even I can decide which of the two photos I prefer. Now it's time to switch to low light. In auto mode, the 11S prefers a smoothened look that's almost unusable to post for the public to see. On the other end, the 11T may look over sharpened but it preserved more details in the highlights. I think this is where the newer and better algorithm kicks in for the 11T's dimensity chipset, but as we switch to night mode, the only improvement on the 11S is restoring the details or sharpness of the photo. But for the 11T, the photo looks a bit brighter, albeit over sharpened. There are definitely bigger improvements on the 11T, but I wish they would tone down sharpening. But overall, I prefer the preserved highlights of it to the 11S. Switching to video, we have to level the 11T with the 11S since the 11S is lacking 4K support. With that in mind, we captured these videos in 1080p at 30 frames, the maximum supported setting of the 11S. Again, just like in photos, the 11T looks sharper and more colorful. 
However, it has a warmer tone than the natural looking 11S. The 11T though has a better dynamic range as seen from the clouds, but I doubt most smartphone users would see this difference. Now at this point, I think we now have an idea of how each phone performs when it comes to its main sensor. Yes, we know that it's a different ball game once we factor in the rest of the cameras as well as the other features of the phones, but we made this video to see the difference between two identical sensors in the budget and mid-end categories. At least in this comparison, we didn't see a drastic difference between the two phones, which is to be expected since we're looking at two identical sensors. What's surprising is that I prefer some shots of the 11S over the 11T considering their price points and other software and hardware factors. Although I said that we're only comparing their main sensors, let me give you a few selfie samples from their respective 16 megapixel selfie camera just to give you an idea before ending this video. Now drop a sub or like if you feel supporting the channel and until the next one, stay safe.